When you're a kid, you're often dared to do something unpleasant. For some, it's a sort of rite of passage. You see it in 80s and 90s movies all the time. Spend one night at the spooky lake, the most haunted lake in the tri-state area, or, or go through the spooky abandoned mansion by old man McGillicuddy's house. Even where I grew up back in upstate New York, lots of teens were challenged to go to Onion Town. Car, there's a car! Ah! Oh my god, I'm going, I'm going! Kids go through some tough shit just to prove they got some cojones, or that they're just brain dead, I don't know. And debate all you want, everyone goes through something different, and the severity changes as the times do. For me personally, I never went to Onion Town. That was old news by the time I was my sister's age, at the height of its popularity. Nah, the real way to prove you were tough when I was a kid is if you visited a small little website full of death, disease, and all around disgusting imagery and videos. The website I'm talking about is rotten. Literally. It's gonna be a tough one to talk about because I really don't know if I can talk about the website itself or show it up on screen, but if you know, you know. Now, admittedly, today's episode might be the closest we'll ever get to in actually visiting something that could have seriously traumatized us as kids because it's not just rotten we're talking about here. We're gonna cover all of those shock websites that were so popular to us when we were kids and probably still popular to the newer generations. See, my introduction to my website, Rotten.com, was actually through word of mouth. My friend, let's say his name is, I don't know, Alberto, talked about this one website where he saw a gallery of dead bodies and gore, all sorts of terrible shit he could barely describe. Mind you, we were about 10 or 11 years old. Pretty young, maybe too young to be visiting websites like these. To this day, I still don't know how Alberto found Rotten.com, but I know for a fact that I was just too curious not to find out what the website was all about. So that night, I visited Rotten.com, and I was presented with this skeleton-looking figure, and their famous tagline, when hell is full, the dead will walk the earth. The very first photo I ever saw from Rotten.com was this one photo called Blonde or Blonde Beauty or something like that. And it was a photo of a young girl decaying in a hotel room. Her skin was a pale blue that I've never seen on skin before. Her eyes were soft and dehydrated and her only distinguishing feature was her blonde hair. Everything else was rotting away. It terrified me and I really didn't want to explore any further than what I had already seen. So I closed my browser, and went to sleep, and I tried to forget it, but I was just too morbidly curious. And so the very next day, right after school, I revisited Rotten.com and explored the rest of the horrors that website had in store. Picture after picture, video after video, I'd witnessed the worst that humanity had to offer, but in many ways, what all of us had to deal with eventually, death, the ever looming presence of it. This website does everything it can to remind you that people just die, and many times it is never a glorious or glamorous death. It can be absolutely shocking and downright disgusting. Looking back now though, Rotten.com wasn't really that bad. I mean, yeah, it's bad, but it's practically babies for a shock site. I think most of us stumbled upon or purposely looked for Rotten.com in our childhoods, and if not, then you're probably familiar with other gore sites like gore.com. Of course, I started this video off with the rite of passage, and while seeing these shock sites alone are in many ways rites of passages of themselves, for a lot of you and your friend group, None were ever quite as popular as two girls, one cup. Wow, this is so going to be demonetized. I, I can't even believe I'm making this video, but I want to talk about it, all right? Whatever. Two girls, one cup is legendary, and I don't believe we'll ever see a video quite like it in, like, ever. 
I mean, yeah, we've had videos like it and many much worse, but what I really mean is there hasn't really been a mythical popular gross out video like that ever since its first coming out. Everyone in my high school talked about two girls one cup and then everyone dared each other to check it out or record themselves watching the video. I'm not even kidding when I say this, but I'm honestly convinced that two girls one cup popularized reaction videos. No joke, everyone reacted to that video. Even I did a reaction video back when I was a kid. Don't bother looking it up by the way. I privated it and it was like 10 years ago. Anyways, my point is, this video was viral. Joe Rogan reacted to it. Marines reacted to it. This old lady reacted to it. Everyone reacted to this video and it was a stupid, fun challenge. I, I don't know, but to this day, you really can't find anyone who doesn't know what Two Girls One Cup is. Unless, of course, they're a boomer who has no semblance of what the internet is, but even then, well, yeah. Now, there's been some questions as to the validity of this website, and no doubt are they good questions, but I don't really care much for that at all. If you want to dive deeper into that video, I'd suggest watching Wang or Moist Critical talk about it. The point is, this traumatized the shit out of us. No pun intended, but what? Actually, maybe yes, pun intended. But what's fascinating about this is that nobody really forced us to watch this. I mean, sure, peer pressure probably got the better of most of us, but we still chose to watch this. We chose to be traumatized. And what I've learned in the previous years of Traumathon is that trauma is instigated unintentionally from media we consume. I mean, nobody could have guessed that something like I don't know, Super Mario Brothers could scare us so badly just because of that piano with teeth or that giant eel underwater, right? Now, Traumathon is filled with entries that seem innocuous at first glance, but deeper within the surface, there's something else hiding within, something that'll scar you for life. Two Girls One Cup, on the other hand, was something we deliberately delivered onto ourselves. We sought after this video. We knew this video was going to be bad. Some of us even knew the contents of the video itself, and yet we couldn't help quell our awful curiosity. And that opened the gates to some of the worst shit we've ever seen in our lives. Now that some of us had had a taste of what the internet held, many of us sort of stuck with the morbidly curious high that we sort of obtained. What else did the internet have in store for us? What other things can we watch? What sort of terrors are there? BME Pain Olympics? Oh sure, that's a classic. Goatsy? Yeah, that's fucking disgusting. Mr. Hands? Oh, we all know him. How about those Mondo films that are sold in Brazil and allegedly banned all over the world except in Canada or whatever? Sure! Sock it to me, I can handle it. I'm, I'm just a quirky teenager who can handle this sort of violence and gore because I'm psychic psychotic or something. Ooh, I'm not affected by this at all. I must be a sociopath, XD Roar. I would say that to my friends all the time. It's really a gateway into the fascinating world of death and the limits the human body can really go through. I've seen people fall off buildings, set on fire, blown to bits, and yeah, and it was awful. I'd even prank some of my friends with these shock sites. Remember Blue Waffle? Yeah, you do. And if you don't know what that is, well, I don't really recommend looking it up. But things have sort of changed since I was a kid. See, gore and death and whatnot was a lot easier to find when I was younger. Nowadays, you look something up like Blue Waffle, and you're pretty much not going to get what you expect to get. Google has fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what kind of freak you are, implemented a filter that's really not that difficult to search around, but still requires more effort than I think the average person would want to give. Meat Spin's a classic though. I'm sure that's easier to find online as well as Lemon Party. Do keep in mind though, these websites are old and they could contain viruses, so I really don't recommend going to them anymore as I don't know what they contain. Still, the point remains. Back then, lots of people were getting their kicks off of watching gross and disgusting stuff, and a lot of us really thought we were crazy for not really thinking much of them at the time. Well, the truth is, 
I, I didn't really know it at the time, but I wasn't actually building up a tolerance for gore and violence. I was actually affecting my future self. Look, almost two decades have gone by since I've seen gore and actively looked for people dying. And while I'll admit I'm not as sensitive as most people are when it comes to online shock sites and death, I am much more aware of people's lives nowadays. It actually disturbs me now way more than it ever did than when I was a kid. And I really think it's due to the fact that I'm just more aware of my mortality. Look, all jokes aside, I'm not as young as I used to be. And I've had my fair share of medical scares. Hell, this past summer, I had a cancer scare. I'm fine and perfectly healthy. But when you become aware of your own life and the lives of others, acknowledging that they're worthy of that life as much as you are really changes your perspective of what these shock sites have. I think the last time I ever watched something as a teen that was considered shocking and disturbing was when I watched Two Guys, One Hammer. That one was terrible. It involved the murder of this old man by the hands of these two teenagers known around the world as the Hammer Maniacs. These two Russian teens pretty much made headlines all over for not only the publication of the video, but also for the absolute insanity of these kids. They had nearly 30 victims, 21 of them being murders and 8 being assaults. It's one thing to see dead bodies and awful accidents. It's a whole nother thing entirely when you witness a horrific murder. I can't really describe in detail what the video contained, and for many of you, it might not be the worst. I mean, it's not the worst for me personally, but it's the one that sticks out. There's also the Mexican cartel execution videos, which are just absolutely brutal, and I seriously do not recommend watching them at all. It's, it's not a fun thing to watch them. It's not even something that should fulfill your morbid curiosity. It's it's just awful. See, and, and that's why things started to shift for me mentally, because shock websites and gore videos, they're not fun to watch, at least not for me. It, it was just a morbid curiosity I think I had to fill, because I was just surrounded by things that covered and censored that sort of stuff. I think I've just had my fill around the time when I saw murders take place on camera. And I do somewhat regret seeing these videos. I'm not manly for not reacting to these sorts of things. I'm also not tough. I'm just deeply disturbed to the point where I can't recover from that sort of trauma. I couldn't describe why this sort of stuff really affected me or why it didn't. But in reality, it was affecting me. My mentality, my way of thinking, why I think this way, and the other sort of fragilities of life. I know there's quite a few teenagers out there who watch my videos and I know some of you might think you're really tough or maybe sociopathic for not being grossed out by shock websites or gore videos these days, but seriously, do yourselves a favor, don't watch that sort of stuff. I mean it, I seriously mean it. These videos stick out like a sore thumb in your brain. They stick with you for life. You will always remember those victims, those faces all of that stuff. I didn't even have to look up the blonde photo that I mentioned earlier from Rotten.com. I'm just recanting from what I remember, because it's sticking out to me vividly. And sometimes I still have nightmares about that photo, even when I didn't have them back in the day. I've had ton of friends who've watched that one video of that woman getting her head caved in by that passing brick as she was driving with her family in a car, and they've pretty much never recovered from hearing that audio ever since. That's not even visibly shocking. You don't see anything. You just hear everything. It's just audio of the aftermath, and yet it's stuck with them for life. Everyone that I knew who watched that video pretty much stopped watching gore and shock sites after that. When you break the barrier between mundane pictures of the dead and gross videos of people eating poop, then you begin to understand the humanity of it. And that's all it really is, it's the human element of it. Like I said, I wasn't aware of the fact that these people I was morbidly curious about were humans. Yeah, I know that's weird to say, and borderline psychotic maybe, but when there's a screen in front of you, and about a hundred thousand miles between you and the victim, you tend to forget that these people have lives, and their bodies are not something to be taken for spectacle. Seriously, if you think you aren't affected by these shock sites and gore videos, heed my advice. As an old fart who was in your shoes, they do affect you. 
and they affect you for a lifetime. There are visuals you'll never forget and audio you'll never unhear. It's something that'll be with you forever. And if you're okay with that, hey, I ain't judging. I'm just giving you a heads up. This stuff is literally the stuff of nightmares.